The entrance of God's word gives light and it brings understanding to the simple. Even as you're about listening to this message by the man of God, we hope that the light of God's word will be shed abroad in your heart. You will know what to do and you will know how to live. And so if you're new to this channel, kindly hit on that subscribe button for us. And then like this message. Also go to the comment section and comment whatever you have learned. Share this message abroad because we won't always be a blessing to the world. Thank you. We just saw it. Jesus said, the words I speak are the Father's words. The words I speak are the Father's words. Those are the Father's words. I will build my church. It's not just Jesus' church. The church is the Father's family. Now notice John 14 verse 11 to 13. Just pay attention again. Believe me that I am in the Father and the Father in me. Or else believe me for the very work's sake. Next verse. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believeth on me, the works that I do shall he do also. And greater works than these shall he do because I go unto my father. Next verse. And whatsoever you shall ask in my name, that will I do that the father may be glorified in the son. Can everybody say very loud with me? The father is glorified in the son. So the question will be, who builds the family? The father builds the family in the son. The father builds the family in the son. In John chapter 5 verse 17. John chapter 5 verse number 17. But Jesus answered them, My father walketh hitherto and I walk. My father walketh hitherto and I walk. Now that verse is coming out shortly. My father walketh hitherto I walk. In other words, the son's walk is the father's walk. The son's walk is the father's walk. It is the father that is walking and we see the walkings of the father in the son. We see the walking of the father via the son. In this family, the father and the son are not independent. They are not separated. The father walketh and I walk. Look at John chapter 5 verse 19. John chapter 5 verse number 19. Then answered Jesus and said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, the son can do nothing of himself, but what he seeth the father do. For what things soever he doeth, this also doeth the son likewise. He uses the term egozomai in the Greek, E-R-G-O-Z-O-M-A-I, egozomai. He said the father walketh, then I walk. In other words, my walk is from the father's walk. My walk is from the Father's walk. Look at that verse 19 again of John chapter 5. Then answered Jesus and said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, The Son can do nothing of himself, but what he seeth the Father do. For what thing soever he doeth, this also doeth the Son likewise. The Son can do nothing. But what he sees the father do. So that means there's nothing the son does that is not the father in him doing it. The son can do nothing. That word nothing is key. So whatever the son does is a response to what the father did. Whatever the son does is a response to what the father did. Now pay attention. So a family we know naturally a family is birthed by the father. The word father in the Greek is the word Abba. Abba. A-B-B-A or Pater. P-A-T-E-R. Father. Abba 
or Pata. The Greek and the Hebrew says Abba or Pata. It's used for someone who starts something. A father is someone who starts something or who births it or a founder. A father is one who births something or a founder. A founder. So the founder of the church is the father. The founder of the family is the father. Look at that Ephesians again, chapter 2, the 18th verse. For through him we both have access by one spirit unto the father. Oh, glory to God. We both have access. So the founder of the church is the father. The son can do nothing of his own self. The son can do nothing of his own self. Remember what the father said about Jesus. He said, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. He said that to John the Baptist at River Jordan. Then when Elijah and Moses showed up on the Mount of Transfiguration, the father spoke from the heavens, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. Hear ye him. In other words, if you are going to hear me, you will have to hear him. He is not a messenger. Jesus is not an errand boy. Jesus is not junior God. Jesus is the father manifest. Jesus is the father revealed. Jesus is the father unveiled. The Bible calls Jesus the image of the invisible God. He is the image or Jesus gives visibility to the invisible God. He is the revelation of the Father. Now, so Jesus is the Father manifest. In that Ephesians, again, chapter 2 verse 18. Ephesians, chapter 2 verse 18. For through him we both have access by one spirit unto the father through him that's jesus we both have access by one spirit unto the father now what do you mean by the word access that's why he said you are no longer a stranger you are no longer a foreigner but you are now a native a fellow citizen with all the saints and of the household of God. Now put up that Ephesians chapter 2 from verse 18 to 20. For through him we both have access by one spirit unto the Father. Now therefore you are no more strangers and foreigners. But natives, fellow citizens with the saints and of the household of God next verse and are built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets jesus christ himself being the chief cornerstone so god is a founder that's why it is called a household you're no longer foreigners in other words you don't go through jesus because you only came once from the day you received Jesus, now you have undeniable, unrestricted, and unconditional access. And that access was given to you once. He is not talking about prayer. He is talking about salvation. That we have access or we have come in. We are now in the household. We are now in the family. Remember. We said we don't come near to God. We said God does not draw us nearer. We said we don't come close. We said we are in him. We are in. That's where the believer is. The believer is in Christ. He has undeniable, unrestricted, and unconditional access to the Father. 247. Now, so we are in the household. Now, how did we come into the household? We came 
in Christ. We came in Christ. Now who walks in Christ? The Father. The Father walks in Christ. So we came in the Father. That means you cannot be born by the Son. You are born by the Father. You cannot be born into the kingdom and the family of God by the Son. You are born into the family of God, into the kingdom of God by the Father. But where does the Father walk? The Father walks in the Son. So Ephesians chapter 3 from verse 1. For this cause I, Paul, the prisoner of Jesus Christ for you Gentiles. Next verse. If you have heard of the dispensation of the grace of God, which is given me to you world. Next verse. How that by revelation he made known unto me the mystery, as I wrote afore in few words. Next verse. Whereby when you read, you may understand my knowledge in the mystery of Christ. Next verse. Which in other ages was not made known unto the sons of men, as it is now revealed unto his holy apostles and prophets by the Spirit. Next verse. That the Gentiles should be fellow heirs and of the same body and partakers of his promise in Christ by the gospel. Next verse. Whereof I was made a minister according to the gift of the grace of God given unto me by the effectual working of his power. Next verse. Unto me, brother Paul is now speaking, unto me who am less than the least of all saints, is this grace given that I should preach among the Gentiles the unsearchable riches of Christ. Next verse. And to make all men see what is the fellowship of the mystery which from the beginning of the world had been hid in God who created all things by Jesus Christ. Next verse. To the intent that now unto the principalities and powers in heavenly places might be known by the church the manifold wisdom of God. Next verse. According to the eternal purpose which he proposed in Christ Jesus our Lord. Now pay attention to verse 12 now. In whom we have boldness and access with confidence by the faith of him. Take note of those words. Boldness, access with confidence by the faith of him if you preach the gospel without assurance it is not the gospel of Christ any gospel preach that does not have assurance does not have persuasion does not have conviction a gospel that we have to wait for heaven at last a gospel that we are not sure until that day we shall know those that will make it a gospel that we keep praying and begging. Oh God, may we make it at last. Oh God, may we make it. No assurance. That is not the gospel of Christ. He says we have boldness. He says we have access with confidence. That is assurance. All the words in the epistles are filled with so much assurance. He said now we have access. We have boldness. With confidence, the word parousia in the Greek, P-A-R-E-S-I-A, -E parousia, P-A-R-E-S-I-A, -E it means freedom of speech. We have freedom of speech. Now look at verse 13 to 15 of that Ephesians chapter 3. It says, wherefore I desire that you fail not at my tribulations for you, which is your glory. For this cause, I bow my knees unto the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, of whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named. He calls it a family. So the church is firstly a family before it is a gathering. It is firstly a family before it is a gathering. Many people know the church of the gathering, but are not aware of the church of the family. It is the family that gathers. 
it is the family that God has so we are firstly a family Ephesians chapter 3 verse 14 look at it again for this cause I bow my knees unto the father of our Lord Jesus Christ next verse of whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named the word named there means to call that is it is God who called us a family we did not choose him the Greek word there means that he put the label on you first it's not that we are calling him our father we call him our father because he first called us his sons behold what manner of love the father has bestowed upon us that we should be called the sons of god he first called us his sons so our same father is only a response we did not initiate it you did not initiate being his son he was the one he is the one and will always be the one that we are named by the father of whom the whole family is named the way the jews will say he is of abraham because the jews relates you with your father so he is saying we are related to our family so if there's a surname born by the family every one of us will bear the same name so it's very vital to understand this we are named by god you didn't make him father he first made you son remember that promise where he said i will be to you a father and you will be to me sons and daughters so it is his work remember i will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it every believer is the father's work say with me very loud i am the father's work say it again he says i will build my church i will build my family so we did not initiate this family and your pastor didn't initiate the family your pastor doesn't determine who is in the family it is the father that births the family when he gave us his spirit the spirit said in us abba father god set for the spirit of his son in our hearts and what the spirit has taught us to call him is abba father he named us himself we are so grateful for having you here on our platform kindly hit the subscribe button if you are new here and also like this message for us do well to comment in the comment section because we want to know what you learned and where you're watching us from thank you message community